Hey guys, hope you guys are doing well this Sunday. Um, just doing a little Sunday Devo. Um, been doing this the last few weeks or so um, with First Prez, and each person has done a different one every week. Um, so keep looking out for them. <coughs> but um, today we're gonna we're gonna talk about um, something that's pretty applicable right now. Um, kind of stress and anxiety, which I know we've talked about a lot this year, um, but uh, I think it's something that is a very big, uh, I guess you could call anxiety and stress a pandemic right now as well, because, you know, a lot of people are um, just getting really scared with the way things are right now and really stressed out, just Business, businesses can't really thrive right now and um, just people are struggling and uh, they don't know where their, uh, their next paycheck is coming from sometimes, some people. So <clears throat> it's just kind of a, it's a stressful time. It's a stressful time with a lot of unknowns. Um, so that's why we are going to turn to Christ and see what he has um, set out for us in the Word of God um, so that we can read and be in comfort, um, be comforted in this <clears throat> in this time. And uh, but yeah, so uh, if you guys want to turn with me to Psalms 46, we're going to read that. Pull it up. Psalms 46. <clears throat> God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear the earth, through, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns, the nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Thanks be to God. <coughs> so, um, first I want to say, um, so we've all had plans, right? Kind of within this time, we all have plans to do other things in quarantine. Um, seniors, you were planning on going to your last semester of high school. And everybody else, you are probably just looking forward to being able to see your friends every day. Um, and even if, even if you don't like school, you know, there's still that. Uh, but now we're in quarantine and um, travel is very, very uh, prohibited and It's just not what any of us any of us planned. Um, when I was a junior slash senior in high school, I very very adamantly wanted to go to Oklahoma State University. Um, that was like my dream. Uh, I just thought it would be like the best thing in the world, and. Uh, you know, I started getting into the scholarship and grant and loan process, and I had like at least I had about fifteen thousand dollars of scholarships a year at Oklahoma State. And if you know, Oklahoma State is still about forty thousand a year, 
So that's, you know, still a lot of money. Um, I pay for um, my own college, and so that was not feasible. Um, and so that kind of dream that I built up really just kind of was taken out from under me. Um, and then I planned on going to Texas Tech, and that was feasible, money-wise. But you know what? Um, I think God just said no. <laughs> he really did. Because, um, <clears throat> like, I was planning on going. I was, I was about, I was about to go, and then um, my buddy Brett came home from an organization called YWAM, and. He tells me all the great things that he got to do there. Uh, YWAM is Youth with a Mission, and uh, he's got to go do mission work. Um, and when he told me that, I had kind of felt convicted for a few years by then. I was like, I think I'm supposed to do YWAM. But I just never knew when I was going to do it, because it takes like a whole semester at least. And. Uh, so, Brett's telling me all these things, and man, I felt so convicted to do it. Like, for like a whole week, I was just like, God, I don't want to do this. Like, do I? Do I really? <laughs> and, of course, God, God's will won over. And so, uh, that's what I did. It wasn't what I was planning at all. Um, I was not planning on going to Montana and then Cambodia. Uh, for a total of, you know, five months. Um, that wasn't what I had built up in my mind. Uh, and so in those times it was really stressful because I was supposed to go to a four-year university and I was supposed to get a degree, go make a bunch of money, and um, that's just not what God tells us um, that it's all about, you know. The American dream is uh, a lie to the Christian years because that's not what we're supposed to set our heart upon, um, our hearts upon. It's, it's something that is completely of this world. Um, and <clears throat> he goes, it just goes on to say that um, even when we do make plans, um, God is ultimately in control, even in this time. God is in control. And I know that's hard to accept and feel when you're in your house for four weeks straight. <sighs> but it's in the time of suffering um, that God actually um, is very much so like trying to get us to focus on Him. Because that's like the one time that is like especially good to focus on him because we're at our weakest points and we're so vulnerable and we can grow so much and give so much of our hearts to him. So I'm going to go down to, um, if you guys would turn with me to Romans 8, 18 through 39. <clears throat> For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait early, e eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies, for in this hope we were saved. Now ho hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows that what is in the mind is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. 
for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that, the, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. <sighs> what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> Key thing in that, at the very end, um, says, uh, nor anything else in all creation. So there was God, and then there was creation. And so he made everything. So like, there's, what it, it's saying is there's literally nothing on this earth or any other kind of anything, anything that is, is, is being, um, as the verb, uh, is under God because he created it. Um, and so um, nothing can separate you from the love of God. So in this time, in our quarantine, I want to say one, Christ is enough, even in our suffering, even as our plans are being put off, even um, when we are being driven insane um, in our own households, <laughs> um, or also, I mean, we got to remember, you know, real life is still going on too. Um, I think there's still some people um, still going through really hard things that may not even be related to coronavirus. Um, there's still a lot of things um, in the world that can cause pain, sadly. Uh, you think would, a pande pandemic would be enough. But even in those moments, Christ is enough. <clears throat> number, point number two, God is in control, folks. I think we have this idea that the world's just off doing its own thing and God doesn't know what to do. That's just not the case. Um, God is in control. And even through this, God is somehow able to um, glorify, be glorified through this and he's able to work through it, work through the pandemic and our sins and everything and still be able to love us and to still be God. Um, uh, at the beginning of Romans 8.18, um, in that scripture passage that we read, um, it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who <coughs> subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom and the glory of the children of God. And then it goes on, you know, telling us, like, this isn't it on earth. This isn't it. Like, it's not everything to us, that, even though we think so sometimes, you know. It's hard to imagine. Um, 
it's hard to imagine things, I guess, outside of uh, coronavirus. Um, but um, they're still they're still going on. God still exists. He's still in control. He's still enough. Um, and so I think we need to keep our minds on things above. Keep our minds on the glory that is to be revealed to us when we finally leave this earth. And there is no more pain. There is no more tears, nor death, and nor suffering. Um, and I think if we keep our minds on that, it really would um, change our perspective on uh, quarantine. Um, I would also, <clears throat> in order to keep your minds on things above, um, we need to just be in the Word. Um, we, I feel like a lot of times as Christians in Emerald, Texas, we get our you know Sunday dose and then we leave and then <clears throat> maybe we have you know A and L on Wednesdays. Um, but um, the thing is, is like. There's no, I mean, yes, there is, but there's there's not a deeper personal relationship with God um, there. It's just kind of surface level. You know, you talk to him twice a week. And, and uh, I've sometimes fallen into that pit, too, because I'm a busy body, and I, I just get busy with life, and I, for, I forget to uh, be in the Word. And so um, <clears throat> right now, as we have all the time in the world in our hands and everything is slowed down let's take advantage of that I think there's things that being in the word though the word would um, change our mindsets our mindsets immensely um, and it would actually we would grow so much from it and I think that'd be really great to see that um, through quarantine we by the end, we end up seeing um, several people coming out of it just like on fire. Um, but if we keep our minds on things above, like that's not unattainable either. <clears throat> um, but again, guys, uh, I just want to say Christ is enough, God is in control. And keep your minds on things above. Um, I'll be praying for you guys. I love you guys. I sure do miss y'all. Um, I miss worshiping together, honestly. Um, that's like my favorite part of church. It's just worshiping together. Um, <clears throat> I just like hearing all you guys sing. And, uh, yeah. It's, um, it's something cool to witness up there on the stage to get to look out at all you guys. So, um, uh, I'm excited for the day we get to do that again. Again, love you guys. I'll be praying for y'all. And uh, keep your minds on, on the Lord. And uh, read this. Because it's got a lot more than you know. It's got a, lot, got a lot more than any of us know. So, hope you guys are having a good week.